welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And we are back for another Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, it is season eight, episode 13, and this is called Sharing is Caring. And before we get into the episode, um I almost forgot about it. I I'm not gonna lie. And the reason is um out of all the other Real Housewives franchise, because it's on a Sunday night, there has been so many things that's caused it to not air. So for example, during the holidays, you had that, you had a holiday break. And then now, our last week, we had the Super Bowl. So now I think we're done all those humps, but that is kind of the tricky thing about being a franchise that airs in the fall, well, winter. Um, being on the Sunday because, yeah. Anyway, um, the episode was overall, it was a good episode. I will say that. Um, <sighs> Potomac still needs help. I will say that. It, it definitely is not, it's not given when these be gave all the way, but they're doing better. I just wish, I don't know, I feel like a lot of the, Overall, when it comes to the season so far, I just feel like a lot of things are not happening in the correct order. Um, a lot of things that are taking place are taking place almost like towards the end of the season, which is really, really weird. Uh, or, I mean, that's part of it. And then also, too, this mean girl shtick, and we'll get into it for sure, of the Lisa Rinna of this crew is getting old and stale and tired. Um... And then thing two, who's also part of that crew, over it. I mean, at this point, I just feel like both of them can go. Or one of them can be demoted to a friend of and the other one can go. But they need to get split up. Because it's just, it's not enjoyable. I think it's so weird because a lot of people are doing the not so nice things. And, and I will even say Wendy's even part of it too, to me. Um, and I'm, you know, that's... I love Wendy, like, for the show, but it's, like, everyone overall, minus, I think, like, Candace and really even Mia, because I enjoy watching Mia. She's a hot mess, but I enjoy it, and, and, and um, Karen. So, outside of those three, everyone else is kind of, like, I think they think what they're doing looks different out I think they think they're eating or doing something like awesome and, and we're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. And it's not giving that. Like <laughs> what they think it looks like, it don't look like that actually. And I'm just kind of over it. So that's kind of why I'm starting off this. And you know, I do this every single time before I start with Potomac because uh, I just want more. I want more from this franchise. I really do. But anyway, let's get into the episode. So the episode does start with Gordon getting Amia's girls together. Um, basically, he literally is doing this, like tying them up, getting them right, getting them tight, you know. And this is not why I wore this. I just happen to be wearing this, by the way. <laughs> uh, today was my day off, and I basically got to have a, a relaxation day, and we've been taking full advantage of it. But anyway... So he, the reason why he's getting helping Mia get together is um, Ashley's actually on her way over to visit. So while they're waiting for Ashley to arrive, they recap um, Happy Eddie's event. And um, also Mia talks about how Karen and her got into it. And, um, but... When she's talking about how Karen and her got into it, she's talk, talking about both Happy Eddie's event as well as at Naneka's um, housewarming party. And um, the producers in the confessional asked if she mentioned to Gordon about Karen mentioning her, you know, sleeping with a rapper. And she and she laughed. She's like, yeah, I might love that part out. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, for obvious reasons. Um, and then... Um, I will say this also, Mia is a case study. And maybe this is why I enjoy watching her. Because for one, it does seem like Mia and Gordon like rehearse, rehearses their scenes before they start things, which is not good, by the way. That's not a good thing. But because Mia is just so kind of naturally entertaining and kind of naturally a mess, 
in, in a good way and also bad, but in an entertaining way, we'll just say that in an entertaining way, it makes it where it's just kind of like, okay, I accept it. I normally wouldn't accept it, but I do because you're just entertaining and I don't know what it is about you, but you crack me up. <laughs> that is the energy I get from Mia. Even when she's being messy, she cracks me up. Except for, she, she had me change my mind later in this episode, but anyway. Because sometimes she takes too far. But, um, so, Ashley does arrive and Mia greets her with the corona. So, they're already off to a good start because we know that is Ashley's drink of choice, is coronas. Um, so, Ashley mentions that she used to live really close by to where they live at. I think it was probably even the same condominium buildings where they're living right now. Um, and she used to live like on the 15th floor. And so they're just kind of talking about the locations of it all and whatnot. And then Mia doesn't waste any time and, you know, starts being messy. And she's like, so Ashley, what's going on with you and your divorce? How's that going? Is that going to happen? Let's take a step back. Why? What's the delay about? What's going on? Basically all the things us, we want to know. Even though a lot of us, including me, do not believe. We're on Gordon's side on this one where she, she ain't getting no divorce. <laughs> but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. And they actually do recap. They actually show that as a flashback. And then Mia does state to her that her and Gordon were talking about it. And like thinking, well, maybe you're just not going to get a divorce. Maybe you're just going to do an arrangement instead. Um, and, and then she, she basically straight up says that to Ashley. And that's one thing I do appreciate about Mia She'll say it to your face. I mean, she is sneaky, but she still will, for the most part, say it to your face. So, um, Ashley's like, yeah, no. She does open up about it. She's like, you know, I am kind of moving in fear right now. I don't want to get the divorce. And we all know why. I think she actually really was trying to get the divorce, actually. But then she saw that that prenup was not going to go to her favor. So I think this is why she's staying there. My opinion, um, and I think that's most people's opinion. And so Ashley's like, I need the security. I want that security. And she shares that she's been evicted multiple times with her mom growing up. Like she would get home from school and then her stuff would just be on the street. So she just has that fear of, you know, repeating that cycle with her kids. And I think this very unrealistic fear because I don't think Michael will let his kids just be on the street. But maybe he would, because he's not real necessarily the person who's in a very moral high ground, if you will. He's kind of actually quite much the opposite. He seems like a pretty terrible person, allegedly. So maybe that fear is valid now that I say that. But girl, you make your own money here on this show. And I'm sure you do appearances and everything else. Like just save up your coins and make sure your kids are good. It's it, it really is an unrealistic fear. I'll just say that. It actually is. It's just a lifestyle I have to change possibly a little bit. For in, for a little bit. Not permanently. But I don't think Ashley's willing to give up the lifestyle. And that's the other thing that she's not saying. But anyway. So she says that her goal is to end the relationship by the end of the year. And this was filmed in 2023. It's 2024. She's still married to this man. We see where she's at with it. Anyway. Uh, so they do change the subject. And they do start talking about getting ready to go to the DR. And then we do see the unaired footage that um, Robin invited all the ladies to the DR at the NECA's party. Um, and that was for everyone. She does state, she even clarifies in the party, everyone's invited, even Wendy, everyone's invited. So the trip is um, mentioned um, since it is going to be around Ashley's birthday. And they're hoping that it is a better trip than the last trip because <laughs> last year was last season. And last season, we saw that Mia pretty much hijacked the trip and got into it with Jacqueline. And her and Jacqueline had that huge falling out and they were in Mexico. So they're hoping to do a redo. And Ashley's like, you know what, whatever, it's just a birthday, it's fine. So that's pretty much it for that. So next, and this is one of the things I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. The order is just off. So Nineka and Wendy finally do this sit down. The sit down that should have happened in episode three. 
I mean, I, and that's me being graceful, I, gracious. It really should have happened in episode two. No, three. It should have happened in episode three because the fallout really happened in episode two. So episode three is when this should have happened. But anyway, they're finally doing this. And I mean, what we expected to happen happened. No, no, pro, no progress. No moving forward. Um, Neneka pretty much gaslit the whole entire time and kept just bringing up Lebe. And honestly, Neneka, if you're going to keep bringing up Le Lebe or Lebe, maybe she should be on the show as said because she seems super thirsty to be part of your plot. It's like, you can't eat, you still... And Wendy even said it herself. She's like, what did I do to you? And Neneka never answered the question. She just constantly kept deflecting about her family, her family, her family. And Wendy's like, you do realize based off our culture, you speaking ill about my family, is that's, that's a not moving forward thing. Like there's no moving forward with that. And she's going about what Lelebe said to her, but it's just kind of like, have y'all seen Lelebe? Because we saw her in the last episode. And um, I kind of want to put a frame here. I think I might put a frame here for Lelebe. She does not look like she could be trusted. I think she, this is really, really, as part of the sit, sit down, I really wish that they would just invite Lelebe on, on this too. Because she clearly wants the camera time. The way y'all talk about her, it, it, you make it seem like she's a cast member. And by y'all, I mean Neneka. Neneka's the only one that keeps bringing this lady up. And I'll be honest, I feel like Lelebe lied. <laughs> I feel like this is all just drama she stirred up. And it's just a bunch of BS. It's stupid. It's so stupid. So because Neneka could not answer the question of why she has a problem with Wendy, because she... She really doesn't. She has a problem based off of hearsay. Even, even Wendy tries to say, like, my issue with you was based on facts. You did call me a bitch, and you called my mom a witch. And you accused my mom of having shrines. Neneka is stuck on the fact that she has shrines. She won't let that go. She keeps saying it, even though that's not... I mean, we don't know if that's true or not, but I personally don't believe it. Um, because shrines could be for anything. I mean, they're Catholic, so that could be the saints. You know? That could be her having, like, a prayer thing going on with the rosary beads and whatnot. And that's considered a shrine. That's not, you know... So the fact that she keeps using that word and language very loosely, especially her being an attorney... I want Wendy to be able to um, let it go, but I understand why she can't let it go because she's being gaslit constantly. And Neneka just comes with super negative energy. Like every chance she gets, she attacks Wendy, even though Wendy pays her dust. And let's just, okay, let's just call a thing a thing. Neneka's a flop. I don't like her. I'm sorry, I've tried. And even if she would have, I mean, honestly, if she would have led with what she led the last two episodes before this episode, you know, introducing us to her sister, her house, all that, I would maybe feel differently. But because she led with the Wendy hate and based off of something that someone said and you weren't even there for all of that, and then you also made it where your husband basically attacked enough to attack Wendy's husband over Facebook, over Facebook unfriending. She can go. I've been trying to, I've been trying to give it a chance. It's like, nah, she could go. But anyway, that's pretty much what happened there. No progress. So then the next scene, we have Candace and Chris. They're sharing a drink together, um, some tequila. And they finally are addressing some of the issues that was mentioned at like, I think episode one or two. And this is episode 13. Again, the sequence of things, it's, I'm annoyed by it. I'm sorry. It doesn't make sense that we're taking this long to address things that was brought up at the beginning. And that has happened this whole entire season. It's stupid. I don't understand it. But anyway, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me, I'm trying to be positive, but I'm having a tough time though. But anyway, 
So they do address their issues. So we saw last last season that um, Candace had issues with how much Chris was working, so they weren't spending any time together. Well, now the roles are reversed. Candace is constantly working, while Chris is now working from home. He's being a content creator. Um, and for whatever reason, the Kansas had issue trying to say that. But yeah, he's a content creator, kind of has like a food channel wherever going on on his YouTube. Side note, I do want to check it out. I want to see what that looks like. Um, but anyway, so we find out also that Candace is getting re ready at this time for the second leg of her tour, which I did see that. Um, because her tours were at C city wineries and she actually was here in the city and I was debating whether to go or not because I do enjoy going to city winery here and there. Um, but yeah, I didn't go. So for those who did, let me know how that was. Also, the reason why this topic of them not spending enough time together is a topic is because Chris is ready to get this IVF thing going. He wants to get things going again. And um, Candace is actually now apprehensive because of what she mentioned, I believe it was two episodes ago, where she um, had um, found out that she had a lump in her breast. According to the first, the, according to the results, the lump is not anything, it's just like a growth, but it's not like cancerous or anything. And this is where I kind of got annoyed with Chris. <laughs> But I'm also annoyed with Candace. I'm kind of annoyed with both of them, in a way. Because the way they handle things is not the most mature. <laughs> At least in my opinion. I'm not understanding why is there such a debate with this. So, with this, Candace is like, I don't want to put hormones in me and then potentially make this thing that I have going on worse. And my whole thing is with you, Candace. as soon as you got that news, get a second opinion, get a third opinion, get a fourth opinion. We're still going off the first opinion. So that's my only issue with Candace with this one, with this, is that she is still stuck on the fact that she has something growing inside her, but hasn't got multiple opinions. And I get why she would feel that way, you know, wanting, you know, feeling really, really scared about this growth because she shares she has a history of breast cancer in her family. And I can attest to that because I have a history of just cancer in general in my family. And for those who don't know, um, my sister had at one point in time breast cancer. So I get it. 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 Um, so you don't play with that. And when I first got my mammogram, probably about four or five years ago, um, I was told that things weren't looking all the way right all the way. Um, but it was just because it was also my first mammogram. Because that's another thing. When it's your first mammogram, sometimes they don't know what they're seeing right away. So they have you do a second one. So I actually ended, ended up doing like another one, but more like in-depth one. And they didn't find anything. And to me, just from how Candace is saying this, it, it sounds like she hasn't done that or, you know, taken extra steps of getting like blood work done or any of those things. Like there are things you could do if you have history of that. And I've been offered it too, to do some more things. And I'm probably, I'm most likely going to now after hearing all the things I've been hearing with these shows and even when it comes to like some of the things going on in my life right now, I'm definitely going to make sure I'm going to get, you know, all of the things done. And I recommend anyone who has that fear that Candace is talking about to do the same. So for Candace bringing this up on television, I do applaud her very, very much for this. But Chris, you thought forgot, forgot about you here. I don't like how he was downplaying her on this. I did not like that. I didn't like it. I get why, how you think Candace is putting 20 on 10 because she does do that sometimes. But when it comes to the health of it all, that's not one of those things that we do. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm on Candace's side on this one. Um, I don't think she is living in fear. I think she's, you know, being aware, if things aren't right with her body, she needs to figure it out first before she does anything else. And at the end of the day, she's the one who's carrying the child and all that, not you. 
So I know this might have been like table talk. So table talk wise, the way they're acting, that is probably would be someone's first reaction. But actually, I'm hoping you clean this up, Chris. <laughs> Hopefully you clean the conversation up because I didn't like how that ended. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> I just realized in my notes, I wrote, Robin is with her daughters. I meant Giselle. That... Whatever, they're the same person. It's a two-headed green-eyed green bandit monster. Um, <laughs> I said, I said what I said. Anyway, Giselle is with her daughters, but she um, and realizes that um, she's going to do the same thing twice next year because Angel and Adore, they're 17, so they're only a year apart from Grace, and they're getting ready um, to go to Grace's graduation. And it's bittersweet. Giselle's getting super emotional. Grace is also getting super emotional. They give her a photo album of her being growing up. It's super cute. Um, they have a heartfelt moment. And then from there, they do end up going, um, Giselle actually does film, home home video films, um, the, get, the graduation, and then she also does film like the post-graduation celebration that they do. And Giselle's whole family comes through, and of course, as they should, as they should. Um, so you see Giselle's mom, see Giselle's dad, don't see Giselle's siblings. Which, by the way, we didn't know she had siblings till last season because she doesn't open up her life to anyone. Which I don't understand how she's still on the show for that reason alone, considering that this is season eight. Anyway, but then we also have um, Pastor Jamal Bryant is doing a sermon. And she's just happy that the whole entire family has came through. And congratulations, Grace. Um... I love that they were showing leading up to the graduation all the previous seasons of her kids growing up. And I think that is one of those things that's awesome about the Real Housewives franchises. If you have a really successful franchise and you're someone who's like a mainstay, you literally get to see your family grow up and you have that permanent footage of your family growing up. So that is dope. Anyway. So next we have Robin and Neca and Mia meeting up, um, going shopping for the trip. And you know, I'm getting warm, sorry. Um, I was cold in the other room for whatever reason. Our weather here in Chicago has been really, really weird. So like Saturday, it was in the teens and today's in the fifties. Make it make sense. But anyway, so yeah, they're going shopping for the trip. Um, and Robin asked Mia if she and Karen are good. According to Mia, they are. And she's, she says that she knows how to deal with Karen. And Karen only acts this way when she's around Wendy. And this is where I was like, Mia, why? You and Wendy are good now. So I don't see what the problem is. And if anything, Wendy should feel a way towards you, not the other way around. You're the one who assaulted her last season. Make it make sense. Seriously, it's just annoying. But anyway, because this, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, this reminded me why I didn't like Mia last season and the previous seasons. Like, I like Mia's personality, but the thing, like, when she attacked Wendy, she kind of lost me there. But anyway, so, but it's very clear. I feel like that read about Wendy being there I think Mia's being a pick me and I also feel like this is rehearsed between this group because they clearly want to ice out Wendy. That's like the obvious thing. So anyway, um, Robin um, and Mia ask if Nineke have talked to Wendy and Nineke recaps her version of the story and basically claims that Wendy has been gaslighting her. Lies. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say, lies. So that's, that was pretty much the same. Okay, so then the ladies are at the airport about to go on the trip and we find out that um, Robin did actually invite Kiana as well because she actually already knew Kiana through Giselle. So Giselle actually knows Kiana also. It's not just Wendy knowing her. And that actually makes sense because 
that area, like the DC, like DMV is not that, it's not that large of an area for real. So I'm sure if you're in similar social circles, you're going to bump and run to each other. Cause I mean, even in Chicago here, like because I'm in similar so circles with people, everyone knows everyone type thing. It's just how it is. Um, but that's a whole nother thing. But anyway, so the ladies do, um, they, they fly, they arrive, um, on the, bu they're on the bus together on their way to the villa. Um, we find out that they, that, um, there's going to be golf carts for everyone. Well, I think for everyone, it, it's a good, decent amount of golf carts for everyone because they're staying at a resort. And then she got a villa, this one large villa that everyone can stay at. And um, Karen shares that she is aware of this place because this is where Ray would go all the time without her. And then we see a scene of, um, um, of Karen talking to Ray about where they're going on this trip and where they're staying at. And it's quite funny because I'm like, Karen? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> she, so Karen was like, yeah, this was during the time where I was on that love juice and um, he kept coming down to the DR for work. And then I called the hotel one time or called the resort, the villa, and a woman answered the phone. He claims it was a housekeeper. So 20 plus years later, we're still together. Karen knew that wasn't no damn housekeeper. And so does everyone else. She basically low-key threw, <laughs> high-key, threw Ray under the bus for being a cheating, <laughs> being, what was che for cheating. And she, I guess they probably worked out behind the scenes and anyway, they're still together. And so <laughs> Giselle, the confessional is like, a housekeeper is not going to answer your, your phone. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I think that was the point. <laughs> but Karen cracks me up. But anyway, so fast forward to, I guess, pretty much almost the final scene of this episode. So they finally do arrive to this resort. And this is what I am talking about. Finally. A little bit of ambiance, a little bit of like real housewives type stuff. Y'all not looking broke for once. It's crazy that it took a Robin trip for them to actually look like they're doing something like a little bit. So they arrive at the resort. The villa is beautiful. Robin's room is looking nice, nice because she got the suite and his chef's kiss. All the other rooms are kind of basic-ish. Um, there are some double rooms, but that... I feel like that was some real housewife producing type stuff. I don't think that, like, they do that on purpose. Um, and then also, they're greeted with champagne. And they all do um, a toast. Like, they, because the, the ladies are ready. They're ready to let loose, have fun. And even on the bus, they were kind of bonding on the way there. Um, and Mia's basically talking about she know her man. She's She's not even, like, being... She's not even like trying to pretend she's not trying to cheat on her man. She said, don't worry about him cheating on my man. And <laughs> she pretty much said that. And um, also like, um, yeah, all the ladies just want to let go. Everyone, everyone wants to let loose. And um, Robin's like, I don't care about this kubaya type stuff. Let's just have fun. Um, which I wish she was stuck with that energy for real. And well, she kind of went all the way on the other side of it. But I wish she was stuck with let's just have fun and not be messy. But we knew she wasn't going to do that. Um, so, but while they're taking making the toast, um, Wendy kind of takes over the toast a little bit. But not in a bad way. It was a, like a good, like, let's have fun. Let's have a good time. Because, you know, Wendy's good for having a good time. Like, she seems like someone... I would, I would go out with her. I would have like, a, I feel like I would have a blast with her. She seems like just that type of girl. And so while she's doing this post, everyone is with this toast. I mean, everyone. Giselle's not even showing that the hate that she normally shows. She's like, yes, let's do this. Let's have a good time. And, and then Nineke's like drama with that you. Like just under her breath. And it's just like, 
Why does Wendy live in your head rent free? At this point, it's not even renting. She purchased a condo. She owns, she owns your head right now. It's, it's nuts. It's maddening. But anyway, that's the other reason why I'm just like over in Nanaka. But so while this is, while this is happening though, Ke Kiana realizes like she doesn't feel good because she took a couple sips of champagne and immediately, I guess, it activated her ulcers because apparently she has an ulcer like in, you know, in the areas. So she had to go use the restroom like immediately. But I feel like no one really noticed that this was happening. I'm just like, is anyone not, not seeing she had to go restroom? Um, so anyway. So then we get to the room situation. And you knew this was going to be a mess. <laughs> um, Robin gets her own room. And she's going to get the nicest room for obvious reasons because it's her trip she's hosting. So that was a given. Um, and... Robin decides instead of doing the thing that most housewives do, she is going to choose the rooms for them. Which you know this is going to go, you already see where this is going. It's giving mean girls lame behavior. Instead of just at least the non-dramatic thing of just drawing out of a hat. And then, because the drama will still happen because there's always going to be some rooms that are not the best. So you don't have to make more drama out of the room picking outside of the fact that you have to pick rooms whether you draw them out of a hat or not. Anyway, so Robin being shady, she was like, Nineka gets a single room because she's new. Ashley gets a single room, even though she always gets a single room, but she's going to get a single room because it's her birthday. And of course, Giselle's going to get a single room because that's her best friend. Everyone else gets doubles. Which also includes Karen. And Karen never gets doubles. She always gets her own room. And yeah, she did this on purpose, clearly. But like, it's just like, shade is not shade when it's obvious. It's stupid then. It's mean girls. It's not even fun. It's just dumb. And so, but Karen forever being the one who is trying to save this show, throws a complete fit and makes it worth this whole entire scene. <laughs> Karen was upset. She was so mad. She's like, oh no, ma'am, I won't be sick. I won't be, I'm, mm -mm, I'm not sharing a room. And then now, and of course, Giselle's being shady and professional is like, yeah, what are you afraid of? We see you without your wig. Oh, okay, I understand. Yeah, get your own room. <laughs> I don't like Giselle, but the Giselle and Karen front of me saga will always, it's kind of always funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. That works for me. Anyway, um, <laughs> and so this, of course, leads to Robin and Karen getting into it. And Robin the whole time is like going blah, 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 just being stupid. She's acting like a child. She's acting like a child. Like, <laughs> it's so annoying. But uh, long story less long, though, Karen does end up like switching with Ashley. Because Karen was like, I will sleep out here in the lobby. I'm not sleeping. I'm not sharing my room with Mia. Because the other option was to share her room with Mia. And she's like, I'm not doing that. Um, because what Karen tried to do, but Robin was being too loud and basically aggravating Karen to no end. Karen actually tried to go to like the concierge to like buy, pay for her own room. Like out of pocket. She's like, I will pay for my own room out of pocket. I'm not doing this. And the concierge got too mad, got too scared when they were arguing. The argument got so loud that the concierge walked away and went away. So she didn't have that choice anymore. So anyway, it ended up where Karen did um, switch with Ashley. Ashley and me are sharing rooms. Ashley's like, Karen, you owe me now for this. And um, while all this is happening, Robin is still there just poking the bear. And Robin and Karen are still going back and forth all at the same time. And I ain't gonna lie, I was getting a good kiki out of it just because when Karen is activated, it's funny. <laughs> 
It just is. It just is. But anyway, so Giselle goes to check in on Kiana while the rest of the ladies are still getting settled in. And Giselle did call something out that I also mentioned too. No one else seemed to notice that Kiana was not doing okay. So no one else checked on Kiana except for Giselle, which was kind of weird because that's supposedly, that's supposed to be like Wendy's friend. Um, again, though, I don't like the subtleness of trying to ice Wendy out, but let's call a thing a thing. That is weird that Wendy didn't check up on you. And Wendy, I am calling you out on that. Why didn't you check up on your friend? Anyway, so after that, Giselle, forever always being shady and miserable, um, goes to plan to be shady and crown Neneka the new grand dame um, with Robin, Ashley, and Mia. Basically the clique, because they're a crew now. Um, they want to add Neneka to the crew, but because they're surprising Neneka, she's not in the crew right now. But this is the crew. We knew we know this, right? Um, and it's annoying. <laughs> so then the episode ends where Giselle does this pres presentation to crown Neneka the new grand dame um, in front of everyone, and Karen's not amused. She's like, whatever, and. Candace is over it and just leaves. She leaves and goes to her room. She's like, this is so stupid. And that's where the episode ends. Um, I did see previews of the next episode. So the next episode is actually going to start off where Wendy does go check up on um, Candace. And Candace explains, like, this is just stupid. I'm so over this mean girl behavior, basically. And her being so miserable. And then eventually... Um, they kind of get over it and Karen takes it in stride. She's like, I don't feel a way about this. Like we know this is just part of it. And they do end up going to night golf, which looked kind of cool and kind of fun. And then the other thing that they ended up doing was um, Karen did actually go to Candace to talk to her about what happened. And K Karen's like, look, I wasn't mad about it. I didn't care. So if I don't care, you don't need to care. And I kind of, and I agree like Candace, this is not the battle. <laughs> don't pick this battle. I know you don't like Giselle, but <sighs> yeah. But I also kind of get why Candace was that anno was annoyed, cause I would be too. <laughs> anyway, that does conclude the video. I actually did is even though I'm being overly critical of this show, y'all know the reason why I'm overly critical about this show is because I want this show to be like the best housewife show. Well. I want it to be, I want it to be Atlanta and Potomac 1 and 2, like 1A, 1B, and Miami. Miami doesn't get talked about nearly enough because it's that girl. But the problem is because Miami's so great, all the other housewives shows got some work to do. And I'm not trying to compare them because I know the cultures and all that is different. But it makes it hard for me going... Because that was the last show I watched. I went from watching Miami to watching Potomac and it's night and day. And I just know, I just want, I really want better for Potomac. So it's not that I hate the show. And I'm actually, this episode was, I didn't hate watch this episode, which was a victory. Because there were a couple episodes this season I was hate watching it. I did not enjoy watching it at all. I didn't even want to review it, but I did. Um, because I do want this franchise to be, be great, be great. But I do think there's some adjustments that need to be made in order for it, for that to happen. Similar to what's happened with Atlanta. They're making adjustments. I think next season Atlanta will be great. And they made the adjustments with um, Beverly Hills already. I mean, it's getting there. But anyway, that does conclude this video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.